Hello, N4H and H here, and uh, this is in response to a request from one of my new subscribers, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I'm ha I have some help behind the camera right now. My wife is helping because I wasn't sure I would be able to control all of this and the camera too. So uh, Patrick's question uh, came about as he saw the video where I uh, replaced the the straps here on this. Osprey backpack these straps here and then he had asked well how do you pack your backpack so I'm gonna do the larger one first that I use when I'm packing out with my bigger radio for um, you know so it covers more bands has a hundred watts of power available so I'll show you this one uh, first uh, this is an Osprey Kestrel 48, of course, uh, it could be just any backpack, really, from Osprey or whoever. Um, this is the, uh, let me let me show you. This one has a water reservoir that is, there we go, that is down in, slides in here. A lot of them have the water reservoir inside. This one has the water reservoir in a compartment that's actually outside. And, of course, this goes up against your back. When it's full of water, this pokes out a little bit, uh, which is nice and it makes a cushion. Um, then, of course, this is the uh, drinking spout that attaches here magnetically to this strap. And of course, uh, again, the strap is what I had to replace. Uh, on this one, it pulled, pulled loose and broke, and, and it was a little bit my fault, uh, and I'll tell you right quick so you can avoid it in your case. The um, the video explained this in detail, but basically you want to make this the last connection that you make. You want to put the backpack on, attach your, uh, you know, your waist strap. Then you will do your shoulder straps, cinch them down here, and then you would, uh, at the, on the, the last step would be then to attach the chest strap. And so uh, I'll go ahead and tell you what this is. This is uh, something my wife got for me. It's a um, hand cleanser, um, sanitizer, that I, it has a nice little strap built into it, so I attached it to the strap here. This is a whistle, a compass, and a thermometer. This has nice zipper pouches to hold different things. Um, you might put uh, snacks, um, various different types of things in there. One on each side here of this one. Um, I've got some wet wipes in there now. <laughs> so that's this pack and it's again the Kestrel 48. Uh, it has down on the bottom is a zipper for um, that where, where it holds a, I'll unzip it and show you. This is the waterproofing from Osprey. So you can put it over the backpack uh, in a situation where you got rain. Then here's another little pouch down here. What I have in here right now, um, believe it or not, it will hold my small uh, tent. Um, but uh, what I have in here right now is just simply an orange vest for uh, during hunting season. It's a good idea to cover your backpack with orange for safety. So that's what's in the bottom compartment. The brain, as they call it, is where I put other odds and ends and some of the things that you see down on the floor, right, uh, that you will see in a minute when I get into that. Um, also store in here, but like, for example, this is my uh, Petzl headlamp that has a neat little uh, zipper pouch that it goes into that can convert it into a, uh, a lamp that it has a, a, a hanger here that's built in. And this could hang in your tent. You reach in here, you tap here, and you can turn it on and off. So it's a real neat device. It actually glows in the dark after you after the light charges it. It will glow in the dark a little bit. So I have you know things like that. My snack, uh, uh, snacks, and um, snack nuts and things like that. I'll put things like the uh, if you look down here the uh, Cliff Bars nuts. Things like that will go in the spares, I should say, because again, I will use these side pouches here so they're easily uh, accessible during the hike. So 
The, uh, the other things that go in this backpack, if you lift the brain back, I have a notepad in here with a, with a pencil. It's a waterproof pad. And then in the big compartment, uh, and you have an outside part two here that you can put wet clothes in um, or a, a poncho or something like that if you want to have it quickly accessible. This is an Arcturus poncho. Um, this is a pad that you can spread on the ground to prevent, well, if you happen to be in an area where I was once with poison ivy. The inside compartment, that's where I would put the uh, radio. So let me show you this setup here. This is a waterproof pouch from Sea to Summit. And inside of it is the FT-890 with its uh, side rails that I uh, purchased from uh, Portal Zero. I put a spare pair of socks in there and that's where the microphone is. So the reason I do that is just so that, uh, well, I have a spare pair of socks, but also to keep the microphone from scratching the radio when it's inside of this uh, pouch. And then there's the power cable. And this little uh, neat little zipper pouch here has some earbuds in it. That goes in this. Again, this is a waterproof pouch. And uh, that goes in this larger compartment here. And then I have this, this seat here that I can put on a log. And that'll go down in there next to the radio. If I can turn this around. All right, so the radio, the seat, and then um, this antenna over here is the soda beams link dipole, which goes in this bag that came from soda beams. And then I have optionally, if I want to use it, the N9 TAX roll up J pole for two meters. Works very, very well. Suspend it from a tree. And that goes in this bag. And then this is the power source for the FT890 radio. It's a Bio NO3 3 amp hour uh, battery. And I will carry it in the uh, another one of these little Sea to Summit waterproof bags. You want to let a little bit of the air out, although it's okay to leave a little bit of it in, you know, to protect what's inside, you know, kind of like how potato chips are. They put a lot of air in the bag of potato chips these days so that when you press it, it protects the potato chip. Uh, not, not really necessary with the battery, but you know, you can't, you could if you wanted to. So that would also go down. And I wanted to show you that this is gonna go in the other bag, but I'll show you, this is an antenna mast that I sometimes will put down in this part, of the other side of where the radio is in this bag here. But um, the rest of it, I go, uh, just put it in here. The radio's down in the bottom. This bag, again, if I'm gonna, if I think I'm gonna do two meters and need extra antenna gain, I'll do that. Then the soda beans link dipole. Now this antenna uh, can handle 100 watts, so that's one of the reasons it's in this bag. And then the battery, and I use Osprey's neat little uh, strap they have inside the bag here. I'll run it through the, ha the handle that gets created when you snap this, and then that will attach here, and that just holds the battery up, keeps it from dropping down into the bottom of the bag. And then, of course, you know the drill with the Osprey bags, you just pull this cord, stick it down in there, 
You flip the brain, as it's called, over, snap it here, and where's the other? <laughs> there it is. Uh, and here. Now, if you wonder what this is, this is an emergency saw. Um, this is a real, uh, I don't know what sharp edge chain saw is what it is with some handles for it. And I just have a, a carabiner attached to that loop. It's nice having these loops around these backpacks. So there's this, uh, the Osprey loadout. And then some of these other things could go in there if I needed them. Um, you know, the bivy, the, the, this one, I already have a first aid kit. I guess I should show you this. Let me show you the side pouch. Um, things are in here like the first aid kit, the shovel, and some, uh, <clears throat> necessary items in case you get out in the woods and, uh, well, nature calls. So that goes in this neat little side pouch here. And uh, again, you have the outer pouch for wet clothes and uh, other things that you might want to get to in a hurry. So that's that backpack's loadout. Now I'm going to show you this other one. This is a backpack that a good friend of mine found at a ham fest, uh, KC4WZB Joel. And it's um, it was a company called Communications Outfitters. And I believe they're located in Georgia. Um, but I'm not quite sure. I've actually tried to find them, found a website and phone number, but I haven't actually uh, contacted them successfully. It's got a lid here, a little inside pouch, so I'm gonna pack this one and show you how I do it. So, first of all, it's got an inside compartment with a, with a Velcro flap that even also has a, a snap. And what goes in here, I put the the ground cover, the, uh, <laughs> this is a pouch, a poncho, I'm sorry, a tarp or shelter. It can, you can use, um, it's very clever, this uh, called Arcturus, and you can even use your tracking poles, turn it into a, like a lean-to type shelter. This uh, little box you've seen in other videos. This is my ultralight kit, by the way. This is my ultralight loadout. This is my high power loadout with the Yasu FT 891. This one has the uh, mountain topper with the Morse paddle, spare nine volt battery, a recorder, cables up here, and the LNR Precision MTR 4B version two QRP CW radio. That's a five watt radio. And this, this entire thing I'm holding in my hand is one pound. So that goes in this com inside compartment on top of the uh, poncho tarp uh, combination. So that goes there. Now we'll get into some of the other things that are, uh, I'll, I'll do the inside compartment first. We have this bag here. These straps are what you can use with this mast pole. You can find yourself a small little tree stump or things like that and you use these to wrap around it to hold this mast and of course this mast comes out like a fishing pole and this is the spirit of air uh, windsock display pocket pole they call it and i featured this in another video actually deployed so you can look at that video if you'd like it's uh, the one where i was uh, testing my qrp loadout so I'll, this will go in later, but let me show you where this all goes. I also have an adapter here for using the, uh, the roll-up J-pole that you saw in the other bag, if I have it with me. Um, also my Yagi, I don't have here, but it's strapped to my trekking pole. This is an adapter for my HT. The HT here, this is a Yaesu FT3DR uh, that'll allow it to connect with a B and C. So I keep that in the bag here and the, these straps. This is uh, an adapter that, let, that has a uh, connection for USB. So I could charge my phone if I needed to from, it's got an Anderson power pole on the other side. I could charge it from a bio NO battery. And then um, that, that I keep in here. This is an adapter so I can convert from Anderson power pole to, um, uh, oh, what is this called? The uh, Dean's connector 
that powers this um, little QRP radio and I have a diode in there to step the voltage down because the Anderson power pole will plug into bioinno batteries. And then <clears throat> this is the charging system and backup batteries for this flashlight. Let me flip it around. I'll show you where this flashlight is. And this is some of the rope from soda beams. Um, and this little flashlight here is rechargeable and it does get uh, very, very bright. I'm not going to turn it on for the camera's sake. It's got three levels. And so again, these are spare batteries and the charger. Uh, there's a little cap that screws on and it can uh, charge with USB. These are spare uh, fuses. They really go with the uh, 891 because this blue bag also goes in this big bag when I need it. And uh, some gator clips for the antenna in case they were to break. So that goes in this blue bag. And this is just a soda beams bag um, that you can order from their website. And then this is a soda beams winder with some soda beams rope and a two ounce egg sinker for tossing over a tree limb to hold up your antenna if you're not, if you're not using the mast pole. Now, you know, if you've got tree limbs, why not take advantage of that? If you're on a summit that has uh, no tree limbs, then the mast pole comes in handy. So that will go down, put the bag back around. Oh, I should show you what else, what else is on this side right quick. This is a compass and a, an old cell phone holder. Uh, my friend Joel KC4WZB has taught me all about repurposing things. Um, and so this is a Sunto compass and, or Sunto, however you pronounce that, that I have attached to the shoulder strap. And, and I should mention too, the HT clips to the shoulder strap. So when I'm hiking, this HT is available for me to make adjustments, change frequencies, what have you. Now, flip it around and this blue bag will go down in this larger compartment. And then now we'll get to the antenna. This is the NY4G. Uh, portable in-fed half-wave antenna, RG316 cable, you could use RG174. This is an 80 meter extension, it's optional. If I decide that I don't think I'm gonna work 80 meters, I'll take that with me. This is the 60 meter extension. Uh, does it, the, the small radio, the QRP radio, doesn't do 60 meters, so this is something I would carry if I was going to be using it with a uh, bigger radio. So this goes in this soda beams bag now let me put some of this down so i can do this more elegantly and i'm going to show you the uh these go with my guiding system these are little uh i think msi uh, msr sorry uh tent pegs but they're super light and i put those in the bottom here just a convenient place to carry them. And then the coax. And so if I'm going, if I know I'm going to operate 80 meters, then I will put the 80 meter extension in here. And this also will go in this larger compartment in here. So the radios in here with the poncho and the ground cover. There's the blue bag with some power accessories and things, adapters, and the antenna. So now we'll talk about this little spot here. This is my guying kit, which is nothing more than a carabiner with some more of that soda beams rope, three of them tied on it. And I keep it right here, nice little compartment for it. And again, it goes with this. Now, when you pull this telescoping pole out, it's going to get bigger and bigger as it goes down, right? So this carabiner will reach a point where it just stops. So it's a real easy, quick way to do a guiding system. Again, learn that from my friend Joel KC4WZB. He's a beast at, at repurposing things. So this will go tucked down in here as well. And then this backpack has these neat little zipper pieces, uh, uh, optional zippers on the side here. So I just undo this one because that's too big, uh, too long to be able to close it, but it, they thought of everything with this backpack. Again, communications outfitters. Uh, it came from the Dayton Ham Fest. Now, 
uh, which, so speaking of repurposing, here's the clipboard you've seen featured in uh, other videos. Uh, the clipboard idea from my friend Joel, the Morse key, uh, magnetic Morse key attaches here. This is a little clock, although this QRP radio has a clock built in. The Velcro to hold the radio, the battery. And uh, so that brings me to the seat. Now, in this backpack, it was that other that folding seat. And this one, it's just a, a sporting goods pad for uh, taking to a bleachers at the ball game. And I tuck that down in this large compartment here. So it's kind of a separator between the, where the radio is and this other pouch and where the antennas and the um, options pouch goes or bag. And then I take the clipboard and I just tuck it down inside behind that uh, pad so that's how these things store now this optional but this is a diamond srh 770s extremely long range antenna flexible that i will sometimes use with this radio this is the signal stuff antenna the one that you could tie in a knot uh, but it doesn't have the range that this one has so I've made a 124 mile contact with this one from a mountaintop with using a five watt HT. So if I'm gonna carry this, and I usually do, I will put it down here, or I may just attach it to the radio and remove the signal stuff antenna. Now this top, on the top of this bag, there's also a zipper compartment. And here's what I put in that, that compartment. This is a, a, a battery, a rechargeable, a battery that uh, you can plug into USB to charge and then it has a USB output for this uh, charging cable for my phone and uh, this is uh, well I forget how many thousand milliamp hour 5200 milliamp hour so it'll easily charge my phone uh, uh, probably one and a half times that goes in here with this cable spare boot laces never know what you might need them for um, to tie something or how about this idea, in case your, your boot laces uh, break. And a lighter, a fire starter, some rubber bands, a multi-tool Leatherman pliers. This came from the bike store, but it's got some neat little, uh, well, screwdrivers, but also um, some uh, hex heads and star heads. Uh, that can be used in an emergency that happens to fit uh, uh, one of the bolts on my, two of the bolts on the antenna. And then this is another multi-tool from Columbia. A little bit of a saw there, carabiner, different screwdriver setting uh, attachments, and a knife. So that, that and the bike tool go in here. And also, that this HT can use Bluetooth, so this is my Bluetooth earbud. And if I've decided I want to do the Bluetooth thing, I'll put that in there as well. And then this zips shut on the top. Now, if I'm not going to do Bluetooth, I'll use the, the speaker mic. All right, now this compartment is, uh, is ready to close. So it just has a zipper. Oh, I'm about to forget my gloves. So the cold weather gloves. Um, these are some gloves that come from Walmart and if you may have seen my video the other day where I showed that I cut the little slots in here for cold weather and my wife did a better job than I did in the other video I, <laughs> I showed you that I had just uh, soldered uh, used my soldering iron to melt this um, my wife did a much better job she stitched it so in cold weather I just poke my finger through there's velcro on the back that I glued on these gloves that attaches here and here so now I can work my Morse paddle with my fingers while I keep the rest of my hand warm. Uh, and then of course, in between contacts, I'll just put my hands, uh, fingers back in the gloves and these gloves clip together. So these will go during cold weather also in this big compartment here. And then this zips. and we'll get to the rest of the loadout. All right, so we have more things to go in here. Let's discuss that. I'll reach over here and show the, get these batteries. This is a spare battery case for the HT that uses double A's. A lower voltage, so a little less power output. This is another spare battery, just like the one that comes on the HT, just a backup. 
uh, because the HT, I actually have not had to use the backup battery yet uh, on, a, on a day outing, but uh, if I were to do an overnight thing, I probably would need these uh, because that HT is transmitting APRS beacons, so my wife could find me on the map if she needed to, uh, as well as it's serving as a dual, dual receive radio, dual band. I use it for activating on VHF. So what I do with these batteries is there's a nice little pouch in here Hope you can see that. Let me turn around. And I just clip these batteries in here over the edge of that pouch. Now what else goes in that pouch? Protein snacks. Nice place for that. Now these are the backups. I carry some in my pocket as well. And then um, this one happens to have two ink pen slots. So here's one for a pencil. And then I take a Sharpie. Now why the Sharpie? You know on the Appalachian Trail they have some of those places where you can uh, sign your name and put it, it it's a, they'll usually have a cutout in a rock and there's a little uh, thing in there you can sign your name. Or if you, for whatever reason you needed to write on a rock. Um, but they, uh, they have a little pad in there you can sign your name. So I carry that in there. This is the power source for the uh, QRP radio. It's a 11.1 uh, LiPo, 11.1 volt. Uh, this one happens to be a Red Tiger brand. It's a 25C, 3000 milliamp hours. And uh, so again, 11.1 volts. More than enough power for the QRP radio for probably an entire weekend of soda activations. And there is a neat little pouch for that right here in this backpack. It's just, they thought of everything. Now this is my Sawyer Squeeze, in case I need more water out of a creek, and I just roll that up and put that in the bottom of this pouch here, Sawyer Squeeze uh, water uh, filter. And oh, and one more thing that goes in here is my um, my backup paper log. I normally log with my phone app, but. Uh, Use out D log, but uh, you know, if I need it, there it is, and I tuck that in there where the snacks were. So that's this zipper pouch. And again, this is the 60 meter antenna extension that I may or may not use. I'll usually use it with that radio. Now, just a few more items. Let me do the this one has a bottom uh, pouch, and I put a nice piece of foam in there. A bivy, an emergency, you know, emergency shelter. The necessary supplies. A first aid kit. Some wet wipes. And then um, I'll show you this while I'm seeing it. This is the, of course, the waist strap, and this is just. <laughs> A little optional pouch I found, uh, believe it or not, some low power binoculars came in it. And this is actually where I carry my snacks for while I'm on the trail. Um, and of course I can put them in my pockets here if I want to. This pant, these are my hiking pants. Uh, they have pouches all over the place. These are Columbia, Columbia shirt. I look like a commercial for Columbia when I'm hiking, but uh, I like their, their stuff. Now finally, what do I do for water? Well, again, this backpack has another pouch. This, this is a detachable pouch, by the way. This backpack has another pouch in between those two with a Velcro uh, uh, clasp here. And this is nothing more than a smart water bottle. And then I ordered this. This is from, um, let's see, what's the brand? Platypus makes this hose that could screw on the top of this bottle. Now, they normally want you to flip it upside down, but I found that it leaks if you do that. And I prefer it, to, so I prefer it to be, uh, it can leak, I should say, to be fair. So I prefer it to be uh, in, up, in the backpack upright. Now this, therefore, I needed this hose, because this is a gravity feed system. This is the hose that comes with a Sawyer Squeeze water purifier, water filter. And so I put that down in the bottle. Now you might wonder why the water is cloudy. There's a tablet of uh, electrolyte in there. You can get different flavors of that. And so then, uh, and I'm just reusing the smart water bottle, okay? Um, then this screws down here. 
and I put th this is 700 milliliters. I put this in this pouch that's in between this pouch and the big compartment. And I let the hose come around this way. The hose comes around through some of these side meshes here that you can put a coat or some, some optional piece of clothing in. And then that will come around. And on the chest strap for this backpack, there's a little clip that I attached on it right here that this snaps into to hold it on my chest. Now, finally, where does the shovel go? And I have, again, a soda beams rope attached to it. This shovel is the perfect shape to tuck in behind my water bottle in this little pouch here. 